Welcome, everybody. Welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome, fellow deplorables. Welcome, all you dregs to society, all you sycophants, all you stinkos, all you hateful <laughs> people who celebrate the president. You're always welcome here, and this is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. I'm Rick Trader, coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, and joining me as the as my co-host is the Doctor for the Republic, Doctor Wright, Doctor Nasser Sheikh. Nasser, it's been a while, but welcome back to Conservative Commandos. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? And I want to big a shout out here to our listeners and viewers. And let's get it started. Let's get it rocking and rolling. Like you said, it's just <laughs> another great day to be alive and well and free and living in the United States of America, even if we're in this self-imposed freaking lockdown. Yeah. You've got the American image behind you with the American yep, flag. I sure do. We've got it wrapped around our body. <laughs> you know what? Let's take it from there. Yep. Yep. Well, Nasser, it's been a while since you've been here on Conservative Commandos. I bet you're, you've got it all piled up, all boiled up inside, and I'm sure you want to release it. <laughs> Nasser, what's on your radar screen today? Well, there's so many things. First of all, I think one of the things I tweeted out and put out to my friends on WhatsApp was that I finally, I think we feel exonerated because of all of the excrement. <laughs> We were Thank taking in that. regards to the last three intercoursing years that we had to deal with. And the IG report basically comes out because Schiff was called on it. They basically said, if you don't go ahead and take those 53 pages of documents of what was done three years ago with all those people that basically came out. And Schiff said no. And guess what? Nunez and his group. Put that out there, and guess what happened? We had some great news happening. General Flynn, the Department of Justice, decided to what? Drop the investigations. And what did you hear from the alt-left and the left-stream media and the Democratic State Party-controlled media? A travesty of justice. Mm. All these things. We need William, you know, we, we need Barr's head. He needs to go. He needs to resign because he manipulated this. But I'll tell you what, the Department of Justice... When they knew that they didn't have a case, they dropped it. And I think, you know, what would be such sweet, sweet revenge would be for President Trump. I thought, Rick, there, there was some mis Listen, we can always cherry pick things, okay, of the most powerful man in the world, the President of the United States. He's done so much for us. But I think a few of the things that happened, obviously because of, you know, being at the place at the time, trying to probably, you know, not stir the waters too much and trying to do things in the beginning of his presidency. I think one of his biggest mistakes in the beginning was letting Michael Flynn, General Flynn, go. And I think it would be sweet, 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 sweet revenge for him to go ahead and say, you know what? Welcome back, sir. We want you back as part of the team. I think that would be great. What are your thoughts? Well, Thank God. Fine. I yes. can't imagine. I can't imagine the nightmare that General oh. Flynn has been under for the past three years. Can and I a say lot lawsuits? Of people, well, I would love to see lawsuits. Yes. I'm not one that likes lawsuits, Nasser. I'm not a very litigious person. But this poor man has lost just about everything, including his home. Mm -hmm. And why it was a conspiracy to get him yes. to get Donald Trump. Plain and simple, that's what it was. And some people will say, well, he, he pleaded guilty. Well, he pleaded guilty because his son was being threatened. And what father wouldn't take one for his son? I don't Absolutely. know. I don't know. And and then you've got Obama out there saying that yes. this is a travesty of justice. Just goes to show this man for what he truly is, Barack Obama. He is a mean, nasty, miserable, spiteful man. And remember what he said, that we have to punish our enemies as well as reward our friends. That. Yep. This is the guy who says, you go to a knife fight, you take a gun. Yes. Uh, and this is the guy. They're promoting his wife. Now there's a committee out there to draft Michelle Obama as vice president. 
knowing that Biden will not be the nominee, it, 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 the things that the Obamas have done during their eight years in oh. the White House to to use to weaponize the FBI, to weaponize the Justice Department. Well, here you go again, Nasser, and we've talked about this before, that in my opinion, the mistake that Donald Trump made yes. was he didn't totally clean out the Justice Department and the FBI of anybody, anybody, anybody that had anything to do with the 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 Obama administration. You're right. You're right. He should have done that immediately. I think what happened in the beginning was they won. There was so much acrimony and things going on. Ryan's previous, you know, became the chief of staff. He needed to lean on Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell. And you know what? It was the inner working. Because at the time, who could he trust? It was his sons and his daughter and Jared Kushner. And that was probably the event, the four or five people that surrounded his family. And they had to do something. And I think at the time, they didn't want to rock the boat and come in there and just start cleaning house. Which That's I what Obama they, did. That, Obama, exactly. That when Obama yes. was sworn in. One of the first things he did was he fired every U.S. attorney in the Justice Department and brought in all his own people. The problem is, is too many of them are still there. Yes. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that once reelected, yes, that Donald Trump will fix that mistake the very, the day after, the day after the election. I hope he finally cleans house of all these people. Because I'll he, tell you what, but, wouldn't you rather have nobody at the head of those agencies rather than in a holdover? So what? Get rid of the damn people for crying well, out you, loud. Let you had it sit when, there. When Obama fired him, you had nobody. Yes. I'm hoping oh. Donald Trump is compiling a list of everyone he wants to bring into the Justice Department. Now, right. He has done some great things, too, in terms of appointing oh, federal judges saying, and those kind of things, too. Not so, saying he hasn't. Right. Not saying he hasn't, Nasser. I'm no. just saying that, in my it opinion, could, yes. this, is the, this is the biggest mistake he made. Well, let's get back to General Flynn for a minute. Mm -hmm. Getting back to General Flynn. This poor man lost everything, including his house. And I remember going back to the Reagan administration. There was a, a member of his cabinet by the name of Raymond Donovan who was attacked by the left. And he was charged. And he went to court and he was exonerated. I'll never forget what he said coming out of the court. Which office do I go to to get my reputation back? Where do I go to get my reputation back? And I will bet you General Flynn is saying the same thing today. Where do I go to get my reputation back? The my West house Wing. back. Three years of sleepless nights. What a travesty. What a travesty. And this, was, this was all a political hit. It was all a political hit, Nasser. Absolutely. And you know what? That He's just one of many. Mm. How many people's lives mm -hmm. have been ruined? I mean, George Papadopoulos. Right. Um, the, the, I can't think of it. He's on the tip of my tongue. The gentleman who was at the center of this entire thing. The, um, oh, my goodness. Uh, no, the... Oh. The, the he was working for the CIA, the person that they the American that they spied on in the oh, beginning. Yeah. I can't um, cannot believe I cannot yeah, think of his name I, right now. But you know that whole thing. I mean, it was just it's just he, General Flynn is just one of many whose lives have been ruined. And as you said, where do they get the reputation back? Where, where do, do they, they get the money that they had to spend on lawyers' fees and whatever? Um, but you know what? At least this thing is starting to unravel. And I'll tell you what, there's one thing that you forgot. I know you gave a lot of um, characters, a lot of acronyms to our first half black, half white president. Um, I think the acronym SOB has to be in there somewhere as well, mm. with all due respect to the presidency. I mean, President, remember when President Bush was being absolutely attacked 
And at that time, Dana Perino and others told him, Mr. Carter President, Page. Carter Page. Carter Page, that's it, Carter Page. Dana Perino, they told him, Mr. President, you need to go and fight back. You need to fight. And yes. you know what he said? He said, I'm not going to do that to the office of the presidency. And you know well, what happens? Should've. There's an old adage out there that fits in everything. Nice guys finish last, finish unfortunately. Well, there, you, there you go. Well, thank God. Thank God we finally have a president a fighter. that does fight absolutely. absolutely. He absolutely does. He doesn't give a crap. Yeah, well... He don't. He hey don't. Nasser, <laughs> let's take our let's take our first break and we've got a, a couple of great guests, actually, three great guests who are going to be joining us today on Conservative Commandos. And that's what you're listening to and watching with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. Today's show, guess what? It's being brought to you by the First Amendment. And guess what? Protected by the second. Nasser and I will be right back. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free. And there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. I'm oh, so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. Reminder, for rebroadcast of our show, to check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. Also, don't forget to like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And Nasser, we say it every day, the hallmark of our show is our terrific guest, We've got three of them joining us today. 
We do. Our first guest is going to be Frank Vernuccio, who's also a co-host here at the Conservative Commandos, and he serves as the editor-in-chief of the New York Analysis and Policy and Government. He's going to be talking to us about his article, Funding Waste and Corruption. We also have Helen Andrews. It's going to be the first time for her. She's a senior editor at the American Conservative. She's talking about her article, The Post-Lockdown. Are we going to insist on the old normal? And then we have Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. He's the executive director of the Task Force on National and Homeland Security, the director of U.S. Nuclear Strategy. And he's going to be talking to us about a very interesting topic, which is Made in America, Protecting Our Power Grid. All right. Now, sir, haven't seen you in a few weeks, and there is something popped up the other day I really wanted to get your opinion of. Got a press release. I yes. Get, I get tons of press releases each and every day, but this one came in last week. From the committee to draft Michelle Obama for vice president. And I wanted to read a couple of lines here and get your reaction to it. With it, with a historic battle to reclaim the soul of America looming, the best interest of the Democrat Party is to nominate a vice president candidate who has the trust of the American people. <laughs> You're trying to talk about Michelle Obama. Well, first of all, I don't think that Michelle Obama is a very trustworthy person to have the trust of the American people. Ms. Obama, they call her Ms. Obama in this. They don't call her Mrs. Obama. They don't call her First Lady oh, Michelle Obama. Is Ms. Obama is the most admired woman in America, I would say, Nasser. She's one of the two most hated women, mm -hmm. that being herself and Hillary Clinton. And it also says her credibility as a trusted leader and a strong symbol of unity. You know, her husband, you talk about unity. I've said ad nauseum during his presidency that he divided America more than any president since Abraham Lincoln, where Lincoln divided it north and south. Obama has divided it conservative and liberal right and left, black and white, men and female, hardworking people and people living on welfare. There is no one who divided America more, but when he talked about the police and said they acted stupidly, let me continue. It's just a couple more. If elected, she would usher in a much needed sense of virtue in Washington which is gracefully exemplified in her explanation, quote, when they go low, we go high. But it was her husband, her husband, and we talked about this earlier, who said, you go into a knife fight, take a gun. Her husband is the one that said, reward your friends, punish your enemies. It was her husband who weaponized the FBI and the CIA to go after people like General Flynn. They want Michelle Obama to be vice president, knowing that Joe Biden will never get the nomination. They want Michelle Obama to be the nominee. I wanted to get your thoughts, Nasser Sheikh. Well, first of all, Rick, um, as you were reading that piece, and then you had to use the word ad nauseum, that's sort of the feeling that I was feeling right there. So pardon me while I barf. <laughs> okay. That being said, that being done, first of all, I don't think we have anything to worry about. I personally think I've seen interviews. I don't really think. I think the eight years that Michelle Obama was first lady, I don't think she has the ambition and I don't think she has the fortitude, the intestinal fortitude to be there for four years, let alone eight, and then think about another eight years, you know, as president. I could be wrong. I just get the feeling that when she's been interviewed, it seems that she truly, truly hated being in the White House, being in the limelight. So I think this is just one of those things here that it just stirs up hope for the Democrats because they're looking for a savior. But I'll tell you what. 
one of the things we have to remember about was this is one of the most privileged, one of the most privileged ladies in America who happens to be American, who happens to be black, who was living in multi-million dollar homes, who got multi-million dollar salaries, who went to the elite of the elite schools, who lived in white neighborhoods, who said that blacks are fleeing neighborhoods when she herself was living in a white neighborhood and not fleeing. And she also said to her most famous words, which were, I am finally, finally proud when her husband was nominated. It was the first time in her life that she could truly be proud as an American. Mm-hmm. I think that statement in and of itself right there basically says to us, we know exactly what these people are like and where she stands. Because as far as I'm concerned, for her to make that kind of a statement, okay, decries everything that Martin Luther King talked about, that decried everything that black America has, that Americans have fought for, and black Americans have fought for, and we fought as well. And in one spell swoop, that was the time when she felt comfortable, when she felt proud to be an American at that time, not when she was growing up as a privileged American black woman in American society. How dare her say those kind of things? Well, how dare her say those kind of things is is easy. Now, sir, I don't know. I disagree with you a little bit that when faced with being in the most powerful chair in the world, these people are nothing but power hungry. Even if they don't want it, they will take it. And let rest assured, she will not be the president per se, it will be her husband who will be the president. So if you like the eight years of Barack Obama, all the divisiveness, the lousy economy that we went through for eight years, oh, you'll love Michelle Obama because mm. this is going to be Obama 2.0. Obama 2.0. I hope the American people finally realize finally realizes what Barack Obama was and say, I don't want any more of that. I don't want any more of that. You know, they call that they think of themselves as the smartest couple in the world. But how dumb was Barack Obama? He's the one, by the way, Nasser, I got gas yesterday for $1.69 a gallon. Barack Obama was the guy when gas was $4 a gallon who said you're never going to drill your way back to two fifty right. a gallon. Remember, oh, remember, that? remember oh, what are you going to do? Wave a magic wand and get the jobs back? Yeah, remember this that? is the guy that wasted all that TARP money by giving money to companies like Solyndra. Remember yes. Solyndra? Half a billion remember dollars. Remember all those government shovel-ready jobs that were... That were not existent. Remember, all that? Remember giving all that money to Iran? Yes. And what did Iran do with it? They're killed building Americans. Killed Americans, creating weapons of mass destruction. Do you remember Benghazi? When Americans were being killed in Benghazi and no one could find where Barack Obama was? He was missing from 5.30 in the evening till 11.30. Even the Secretary of Defense, the Chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, could not find Barack Obama. He was missing. Who gave the stand-down order? Hillary. I don't know. no No one was around. Barack Obama was not around. And then what, what's, the, what's the answer that Hillary gives? At what point in this does it matter now? Remember in the what hearing? What does it matter anymore? More. What's it matter now what anymore? What does it matter anymore? All right. Well, anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest. But we got to take a break. and Don't get you our... feel better? Yeah, I always do. Don't you feel better? <laughs> I do, too. Weeks. And you are listening and watching the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. On the other side, we're going to be speaking with our very good friend, and he really is, Frank Fernuccio.
He's the editor-in-chief of the New York Analysis of Policy and Government, also the co-host of the American Political Zone, seen on AUN-TV. And Frank is going to be talking about funding waste and corruption. Story of government, sounds like. (laughs) Don't go away. We will be right back right after this break. Attention homeowners. Do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 800-917-8671. Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind in financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled regardless of your medical condition, as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas, like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. 
And once again, we want to welcome you back. And this is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, the doctor for the Republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And once again, for rebroadcast of our show, check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. Be sure to like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And with that, Nasser, we do have our first guest of the day with us, and he's a familiar face to viewers and listeners of the Conservative Commandos radio show. Gentlemen, we always like to have on, and Nasser, the, the opportunity to make that introduction is all yours. Well, thank you, Rick. Well, he's not only a friend, but he's also a co-host here as well. On the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, we have Frank Bernuccio, who currently serves as the Editor-in-Chief of the New York Analysis of Policy and Government. He's also the co-host of the Bernuccio Novak Report, which is on broadcast radio and on the web at amfm247.com. He also co-hosts the American Political Zone, which is broadcast on cable in eastern Connecticut, that liberal bastion that we like to call out in the Northeast. Frank, welcome back to the Conserve Commandos Radio Show. Yes, sir. It's great to be with you. Well, listen, we want to talk to you a little bit about your article here, Funding Waste and Corruption, basically right up your alley when you talk about mm -hmm. these things. So give us an idea. This whole thing, this two-plus trillion dollar stimulus package... And by the way, have we all received our stimulus checks? <laughs> <laughs> I did. A trillion, a trillion here, a trillion there. Sooner or later, we're talking said, about real money. Yeah, absolutely. Mine must still be in the mail. That's all I can say <laughs> because I haven't gotten mine. Well, you know, as America really suffers from the shutdown due to the coronavirus or the Wuhan flu, uh, the reality of it is that we expected Congress to move swiftly to provide some funds to the population that they could use while they are forced into shutdown. Now, it didn't seem that complicated. Uh, a bill would be written that would say that during this lockdown period, when Americans are not collecting paychecks. Some kind of funding would come from Washington, some form of assistance. Simple. Well, of course not. This is Washington we're talking about. Nancy Pelosi attempted to use that necessary relief from D.C. as a way to try to ram down the throats of the American people a whole slew of left-wing legislative agendas, including things like, well, trying to rig the 2020 election in the Democrats' favor. So what should have been a 1-2-3 vote, simple to the point, Americans, you're not getting your paychecks. Here's some dollars to tide you through until they can come back again. Turned into a political boondoggle. One aspect of that boondoggle was an attempt to provide payments to states that have spent foolishly over the past couple of decades. Now, we know that states like New York and California spend vast sums of money on things, quite frankly, they should not have been spending it on. In addition to good old-fashioned left-wing Democrat corruption, they've been spending money on things like funding schools for, mid, uh, for illegal aliens. They've been profligate in their spending with all sorts of social programs that, frankly, don't really help anybody but provide a heck of a lot of great jobs for campaign workers for Democrat candidates. So now the, Repu the Democrats in Congress, Nancy Pelosi in particular, are trying to say that any stimulus bill that provides dollars for individual Americans or small businesses that desperately need this so that they can reopen should also include money to these crooked Democratic governments that will use the money to further their crooked schemes that they've been engaging in for the past couple of decades. Mm. And one of those things is in terms of, aren't they talking about also perhaps bolstering up some of these pension plans that the states have as well by using stimulus money to sort of, you know, bail them out as well on that regard? We have to be careful. Yeah, you're correct. There are two types of pension plans that we have to look at. If a worker works for X amount of years and he's told that part of his remuneration is a pension at the end of the road, well, we can understand that. We're all working guys after all. But there's another way that this is abused, though. In a lot of the union contracts, in return, let's be blunt, 
for their support for Democrat candidates, they've allowed sweetheart deals where instead of being based on your lifelong work or even your five best years of work, they say in your last one or two years, we'll allow you to get all sorts of overtime. And that overtime will be the basis of your pension. Let's take concrete examples. A guy who drives a bus in a city like New York. Well, that last year or so that he's on the payroll, he'll volunteer for all sorts of overtime. So that his salary, which may have been fifty or $60,000, all of a sudden becomes $150,000. It's a sweetheart deal. And now his wow. pension, which we're going to pay for the rest of his life, and maybe the rest of his wife's life as well, is based at the rate of 150000 not 50000 It's a sweetheart deal, but you can be sure that that union will continue to contribute to those Democrat candidates and elected officials who gave them that sweetheart deal. Oh, you know what? The same thing happens in California as well. We were talking with somebody a few weeks ago on the show, you know, letting us know about the pension plans and how those things have been you know, manipulate in the favor. But you know what? I mean, that's what the unions are for. And, you know, that's something that, um, you know, there's pros and cons on that as well. But you're right. It is basically rating. We're the ones that are paying into it. It is the citizens that are their taxes. There. So when they talk about government spending government's money, the thing we have to understand is, damn it, it's not government's money. It's your money. It's Rick's money. It's my money. It's whoever's paying taxes. It's the taxpayer's money. You know, one thing, Frank, you wrote in this thing, too. Here, Here's another thing. Just like you said, we dole it out a billion, a trillion at a time. It's like monopoly money. Mm -hmm. And then when somebody wants to do some accounting, I mean, if this was a public entity, <laughs> their heads would roll. You talk about the administration for, you know, Mayor Bill... Um, you know, de Blasio, comrade de Blasio, talking about the nation's most left-wing progressive politicians in terms of his wife was cannot account for over like nearly two billion dollars for mental health program, and rather than having her fade in the background, the mayor has now put her in charge of a key post-COVID you know program that's going to reopen with city business. So there's another boondoggle that's going to be here. Is there, have we ever found money that's lost like this, or do we just dole it out and nobody gives a crap? No, we know exactly where it's going. We're knowing it's going to the Democratic Party coiffers, just like that money that went to the Kennedy Center wound up back in the pockets of Democratic Party officials or the DNC's uh, slush fund. So the problem is, it's one of those things where everyone knows it, but everyone kind of winks at it. No one really wants to do anything about it. And let's be blunt. In states like California and New York, they have become one-party states. No difference, realistically, than in a communist regime where that's a one-party state as well. So you're asking an attorney general, who's a Democrat, to investigate the governor or the mayor, who are both Democrats. It's not going to go anyplace. Now, though, the coifers are running dry. The stress of the COVID has made even those dollars start to run out. So what are they doing? They're now asking the federal government to bail out their corruption. And here's a question. You know, initially the administration, initially President Trump, initially the Republicans, they come out and they basically say no. And then the Democratic apparatus gets into play. And then they start talking about, you know what, if money isn't going to children, Republicans and, you know, the Trump administration hate kids. If it's not going to black Americans, if it's not going to a certain, you know, minority population, then you're xenophobic, you're homophobic, you know, you're, you're a bigot, you're a racist. Do you feel that eventually, because listen, I believe the administration, I believe they caved a little bit on these stimulus packages because, you know, they had to do something and you just can't. So I, I believe, do you think the Democrats are going to hold them over a barrel again? Sure. Look, the fact of the matter is Nancy Pelosi won't even go back to Washington to open up the House of Representatives to do any legislation. Behind all that, though, is the reality that they can get away with this because the press is biased. And Nasser, you said it exactly right. The problem is the Democrats pull these schemes, but the way it's portrayed in the press is going to be Republicans refuse to give small business and everyday Americans a dollar to get by on. 
that's the reason that these schemes get away with all of it. If you had a even remotely unbiased media, this scheme would be exposed. It would not work at all. They wouldn't even start it because they knew the ridicule they'd be taken to by the media. You know what? I know we have to go, but there's something that I like to oh, go ahead, sort so of go leave out there, and, and that is this. I saw a video the other day. I went on the U.S. government site myself to check it out. It seems legit. If you go to the government, the, the United States government website, and you look at the CARES Act, mm -hmm. you will see, Frank, and I don't know if you've heard about this, that they wrote the CARES Act back in January of January 19, 2019 is when they started writing the coronavirus CARES Act. So my question is, have you heard about this? Have you done anything in terms of looking at what they were talking about back then? Because that was just absolutely seen, news to me. I haven't seen the, the actual start date when the legislation began to be written. I know that the most serious discussions on it came about when the shutdown occurred and Americans were put out of work at a tremendous level. All right, okay. All right. Just throwing it out there for you folks that if you want to do some investigating on your own, check it out and see that that date that the Coronavirus Cares Act started was January 19th of 2019, a full year before the first COVID case actually came to play in America in January 21st of 2020. Rick, back to you. Well, Nasser, if you would, send. I'd love to see um, that yep. link. Please send it to me. Maybe I'll be able so. to put it up on our website, ccrshow.com. And you are listening and watching the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. Our guest this segment is Frank Fernuccio. He serves as the editor-in-chief of the New York Analysis of Policy and Government, and we'll be right back. Are you a veteran and are you a homeowner? Then think Streamline and maybe save yourself a few hundred dollars every month on your mortgage. A VA Streamline refinance. It's called a rate reduction loan because mortgage interest reduction is exactly what it does. It's just for veterans and it lowers your mortgage rate so you can save on mortgage payments every month, every year. That's a lot of money saved and it's so easy to qualify. You don't need pay stubs a W-2, or bank statements. You don't need a home appraisal. It's fast and easy to apply. And mortgage interest rates are very low right now. So a VA Streamline Refinance makes it super easy and super affordable to take advantage of this opportunity and really cut your monthly mortgage payments. Veteran and homeowner? Call us to find out more. 888-893-7491. 888-893-7491. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents and they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp, call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. Is your credit card debt driving you batty? <laughs> We're going up! Just like your credit card fees and interest rates <laughs> to the top with those sky-high payments! You can't forget about your debt! <laughs> Always fear the debt suckers are here! <laughs> 
are your payments sucking the life out of you? Just one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your back. Consolidated Credit will lower your interest rates, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, and get you out of debt fast. Call Consolidated Credit and get your life back. Call 1-800-201-8213. 1-800-201-8213. That's 1-800-201-8213. 1-800-201-8213. When debt is the problem, Consolidated Credit is the solution. Because debt sucks! Attention Viagra and Cialis users. Are prescription drugstore prices too costly? Get 50 generic pills for only $99. That's right, 50 100 milligram generic Viagra for only $99. Our products have the same active ingredients as the brand name products. Money back guaranteed if you're 100% not satisfied. Get 50 generic pills for only $99. Order now and call the number on your screen. Have your credit card ready. And once again, we want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. Want to give a shout out to folks who listen to us on radio stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas, and Reno, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster, and Pittsburgh, Boulder, and Colorado Springs, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California, and in Arlington, Virginia, Washington, D.C. You can also see us on the AUN television network. Frank Fernuccio is our guest. He is the editor-in-chief of the New York Analysis of Policy and Government. He's also co-host with Daria Novak of the American Political Zone, which is also seen on AUN-TV. Frank, thank you for holding through that break. We appreciate your time. Great being with you. Endless corruption, endless waste, fraud, and corruption. Uh, how do you stop it, Frank? I mean, <laughs> seriously, my friend, how do you stop it? In your article, you write, Democrats are advocating direct aid to state and local governments with the potential fifth coronavirus bill, which will be on the table when Congress returns. And uh, they already, I don't know, are they back? Or is Nancy Pelosi still in California? What's... What's I the think deal she's here? still going for another brand of ice cream in that refrigerator of hers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank, this is, this is ridiculous. So these politicians from these states like New York, New Jersey, California, you know the ones, the big, the big blue states with the big budget deficits, they run it up. And then they want middle America to come and bail them out using the Chinese flu. And don't call me a racist for saying that because, folks, that's where it started. It started in China because of this Chinese flu epidemic. Frank, am I getting this picture right? No, you are getting it exactly right. Part of the problem, even in those blue states, though, is the voting habits of a lot of the people. Look, the folks in New York State, the folks in California, in New Jersey, in Illinois, they're suffering, too, from their corrupt governments more than the rest of us. The problem is a sort of weird situation where people don't vote for the candidate or even the positions of the candidate. They're voting for the party. You know, there are parts of this country where you could put a combination of Mickey Mouse and Joseph Stalin on the Democratic Party line, and a lot of people will habitually just pull down that line. Um, and that really is an issue. It is evident, it is clear, it is not a partisan statement to say that the Democratic Party has done, particularly in the past 10 years or so, enormous harm to the United States, and enormous harm particularly to many of their own constituents, the union workers, the guys who watched the Obama administration allow those jobs to go to China, the guys who voted for Bill Clinton, even as he was signing a bill that allowed China to take their jobs away and take it over to China itself. But he's a Democrat, they're registered Democrats, and they're going to vote for him. We have to, as a nation, start looking at the candidates and their positions, not the party that they represent. Well, in a lot of these states, Franks, the position is, what are you going to give me? What freebies mm -hmm. are you going to give me that somebody else is going to end up paying for? So now people in Iowa, people in Arkansas, people in Texas, people in New Mexico, Wyoming, you know the states, you know the red states that where the people actually get out and 
work for what they earn, for what they get. Frank, I'll tell you what I see coming down the pike, and we'll only have another minute, but I really want you to get uh, to respond to it. We're already starting to hear the cries, okay? For instance, the mayor of Philadelphia, Jim Kenney, has already come out and said, oh, we need tax increases now. Yeah. Our coffers are dry. We need to raise taxes. And I think that's going to be the cry across the country, especially in these, in these blue states, especially in the major cities. Talk, talk about that, if you will. Do you think I'm right on this? You're absolutely right. But the, the problem is the solutions are ones that the media is not going to support. Stop funding illegal aliens. We don't mm -hmm. have to pay for their education. We don't have to pay for their health care. Stop giving giveaways for unions in return for the unions providing bucks and workers in Democrat Party campaigns or in anybody's campaigns for that matter. There is more than enough money if you're going to spend it on what government is supposed to be spending it on, which is American citizens going about their lives. Public taxes should not be going to schemes which are funnel through efforts to give money to an organization so that that organization can eventually provide bucks to the Democratic Party. Just right, as right. funding illegal aliens is essentially a way of saying we want those illegal aliens to vote for the Democratic candidates that are providing funding for them. Yeah, there you go. One vicious cycle. Another thing, Frank, um, in my personal opinion, we need a line, a line item veto for our president. We really do. I mean, so much waste, so much abuse would be taken care of by just that one thing. Frank Fernuccio, editor-in-chief of the New York Analysis of Policy and Government. By the way, see what happens when you come on our show a lot, Frank. I'm finally getting that one down. <laughs> uh, Frank, please tell our audience where they can follow you, read what you write, hear what you say. Well, our website is usagovpolicy.com, but the most important way to follow our program is with the conservative commandos and AUN there television. All right. Frank Vernuccio, thank you so much for joining us. Take care. God bless. Gentlemen, it was great being with you. Take care, Frank. And, and you are listening to and watching the Conservative Commandos radio show we share with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. On the other side, we're going to have Helen Andrews join us. She's a senior editor at the American Conservative. She's written in an article about... Post lockdown, insist on the old normal. Don't go away. We'll be right back with our next guest. Thank you, Frank. Hey, guys. Are you a veteran and are you a homeowner? Then think Streamline and maybe save yourself a few hundred dollars every month on your mortgage. A VA Streamline refinance. It's called a rate reduction loan because mortgage interest reduction is exactly what it does. It's just for veterans and it lowers your mortgage rate so you can save on mortgage payments every month, every year. That's a lot of money saved and it's so easy to qualify. You don't need pay stubs a W-2 or bank statements. You don't need a home appraisal. It's fast and easy to apply. And mortgage interest rates are very low right now. So a VA Streamline Refinance makes it super easy and super affordable to take advantage of this opportunity and really cut your monthly mortgage payments. Veteran and homeowner? Call us to find out more. 888-893-7491. 888-893-7491. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. 
InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. Is your credit card debt driving you batty? <laughs> We're going up! Just like your credit card fees and interest rates. <laughs> to the top! With those sky-high payments! You can't forget about your debt! <laughs> Always fear! The debt suckers are here! <laughs> Are your payments sucking the life out of you? Just one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your back. Consolidated Credit will lower your interest rates, consolidate your bills into one easy payment, and get you out of debt fast. Call Consolidated Credit and get your life back. Call 1-800-201-8213. 1-800-201-8213. That's 1-800-201-8213. 1-800-201-8213. When debt is the problem, consolidated credit is the solution. Because debt sucks! Attention Viagra and Cialis users. Are prescription drugstore prices too costly? Get 50 generic pills for only $99. That's right, 50 100 milligram generic Viagra for only $99. Our products have the same active ingredients as the brand name products. Money back guaranteed if you're 100% not satisfied. Get 50 generic pills for only $99. Order now and call the number on your screen. Have your credit card ready. And once again, we want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, the doctor for the Republic, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcast of our show, check out our website. CCRshow.com. That's CCRshow.com. You can find rebroadcast of our TV show there, our radio show there, as well as a lot of other terrific information. And with that, Nasser, we do have our next guest with us. And as you do with all our guests, please make her feel welcome. Thanks, Rick. We have Helen Andrews. She's a senior editor at the American Conservative. She's also going to be. She's also an author of her forthcoming book about baby boomers, which will be published by Sentinel this fall. She's worked at the Washington Examiner and the National Review, also as a think tank researcher for the Center of Independent Studies uh, in Australia. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Religious Studies from Yale University, and she's appeared um, in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, you know, all the publications out there. So, Helen, we want to welcome you here to the Conservative Commandos radio show. Well, thank you so much for having me. Oh, great. Well, you know what? Everybody, um, you know, this is something that we're going to be talking about, you know, for generations. Our kids are going to be talking about it. We're going to, did you remember what happened when we had, mm. you know, the corona COVID, woohoo Chinese virus, whatever you want to call it? And how did life change? Because things have, we've seen, you know, things have changed, you know, baby booner, but right? X generation, Y generation, you know, millennials, and things constantly change, but not obviously in terms of the pain and suffering that we've had. So your article, post-lockdown, insist on the old normal. In other words, America's gut aversion, which I think you hit right on the head, is that we do not want to be policed. We don't want our rights to be abridged. At least those of us that believe in freedom and liberty and are on the right side of the political spectrum. So... My question to you is, where do you see all this going? And do you feel that slowly and slowly, as we've seen, our rights get continually eroded slowly and slowly and slowly by the alt-left, the left stream media, what I call the Democratic State Party Control Media? Do you think that's going to continue here, or can we fight back? Uh, I hope we can fight back. I think it's important that we do. Uh, the inspiration for that article of mine was looking at the news from Australia, where, as you mentioned in your introduction, I lived for many years, for most of the last decade. They have decided that they will only lift their lockdown once a certain percentage of the population downloads a location tracking app uh, for contact tracing based on uh, the app that they have in Singapore. Now, this is the federal government of Australia. This is, this is the government 
uh, insisting that its citizens download a government-sponsored location tracking app. Uh, and I just have a, a strong visceral feeling that the kind of thing that works in Singapore is not necessarily applicable to a Western democracy like Australia, much less the United States. Uh, and I keep hearing lots of politicians here, especially governors, saying that they will only lift the lockdowns if certain precautions are in place. And I really want to make sure that none of those precautions are any permanent intrusions on our liberty like the Australian location tracking app would be. Now, let me ask you, in terms of this location tracking app, you know, we've heard it many countries, you know, have implemented this. And obviously, you know, they don't have, you know, our types of liberty and rights and freedom of expression and all the things that we believe that we, that, you know, there should be a separation, obviously, between the powers of the government and what, you know, we have as our rights, you know, as individuals and citizens of this country. So let me ask you, if, for example, they started talking about doing something similar to that, because you know what, the younger generation, I mean, right? the millennials, everyone's into apps or whatever, but do you think that that would fly with our children or the millennials? Do you think that they would think that this is just another Twitter or just another Snapchat or Instagram? Or do you think that um, it's a way for them to sort of, you know, um, you know, like I say, you know, worm their way in slowly? You know, I'm a millennial myself, and I have to say I don't trust my generation to have the appropriate visceral rejection uh, of that. Um, if uh, any state government attempted to make the lifting of lockdowns conditional on location tracking here, I'm pretty confident that a court case would knock it down. I mean, who knows what the courts these days, but I certainly would hope that would be the case. Uh, but just this weekend in the Wall Street Journal, there was a very interesting news story about private companies who are adding location tracking uh, and Bluetooth tracking to, that can tell whether two individuals with the app are more than six feet apart, and that these private companies are now um, insisting that their employees in their workplaces wow. download it uh, in order to make sure, it, because they're making the return to the office conditional on having these apps. But obviously, that's something that once you introduce it for COVID-related oh. contact tracing, is going to stick around and may have any number of other uses that an employer might like. So I think the threat from private companies introducing these kinds of apps is much more present, at least in the United States. Mm. That's the insidious nature of what happens in terms of you hit it you know, right on the head. Here's something, though. If, for example, some governments decided that this is something to do, wouldn't it be nice for us to say, well, you know what, what's the difference between that and getting voter ID? I mean, if you're tracking people with that, the voter ID, I mean, if they're willing to do that, can't we just go ahead with the next step and track people for voting? I mean, Man, if, if that was a one-for-one -one trade for the court president, I might be tempted to take it. <laughs> but um, you know what? Give our, give our audience here, those that are listening to you, to us and viewing us. What goes on at the American conservative? You know, what happens? What's happening in the background? What are you doing for, um, is it a public think tank? Is it a private think tank? Give us, our audience, a sense of what happens at the American conservative. Uh, well, at the American conservative, we are a journalism outfit. Uh, so we're all journalists. Um, so <laughs> having worked at a think tank uh, or at multiple think tanks and at multiple journalism outfits, I feel like the difference is that Magazines produce writing that a normal human being might want to read. As opposed to think tanks, which produce white papers, which have very interesting material in them, but are not uh, not designed to be readable. Um, <laughs> okay. So that's that's what we do at TAC. We try and uh, put forward the values that we have in common and believe in, in a form that normal people might want to read. Here on the Conservative Commandos, our guest is Helen Andrews. She's a senior editor at the American Conservative, and we're discussing post-lockdown. Insist on the old norm. I don't know if we'll ever get back to that. I'll ask Helen that when we come back from this break.
Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. I want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commandos radio show. I'm Rick Trader. My co-host is Dr. Nasser Sheikh. We want to give a shout out to folks listening to us on radio stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas and Reno, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Boulder and Colorado Springs, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California, also seen on the AUN television network in Sacramento, San Jose, San Francisco, all the way up to Reading. Our guest this segment is Helen Andrews. She's a senior editor at the American Conservative. Helen, thank you for holding through that break. We really do appreciate your time. Glad to be here. Artic- uh, Helen, your article, pl- post-lockdown, insist on the old norm. Do you really think that we're ever going to get back to the old norm? It seems to me that... A lot of these politicians have taken this opportunity to take something from us they really want back, and that's our individual rights. The old norm, is it gone forever? I certainly hope not. Uh, And I think a lot of the decisions that we make in the next month are going to determine uh, a lot whether the old norm will ever come back or not. You do have a lot of politicians, especially the pro-lockdown people, who are now saying that the lockdowns are clearly coming to an end, that the return to normal can't be like switching off a light switch. You know, we're not going to jump right back to all businesses being open. But I think it's up to us as citizens to ask all of those politicians, well, why not? If we've flattened the curve and if we're lifting the lockdowns, 
because the enormous economic pain they're causing uh, is no longer necessary in order to protect our hospitals from being overrun, then there is no reason to say that certain kinds of businesses are more essential or less essential. Um, mm -hmm. That that's not a decision that is theirs to make. Um, so why not lift the lockdown completely? That's the question they should have to answer. Okay. You and Nasser were talking about uh, something you have in your article about Australia. Australia is making its new norm conditional upon citizens. Uh, the Prime Minister insists on this app to be voluntary. I wonder how long that voluntary part is going to be in there. They, but business groups like the restaurant and catering in Australia businesses are re already considering requiring diners and shoppers to download the app before being served. Hell, and I say don't go. Don't go to any restaurant. Don't deal with any caterer. Don't go to any business that's requiring for you to download an app. It'd be pretty hard for me to do. Let me show you why. Recognize this? An old <laughs> flip phone? I don't think I could download an app on here. Aren't you impressed that I still have one of these, uh, Helen? I, Helen, seriously, I say to people, just don't go to a business that's telling you to download an app. What say you? Uh, I think there are a lot of people who uh, wouldn't be able to make that kind of sacrifice. You know, if it's their <laughs> favorite restaurant or if it's the mall down the street from their house, you know, they, like a lot of people, you know, they, they just say, well, if I have to give up a little bit of liberty um, in order to just have a little bit of convenience, I think most people just don't want to think about it that much. And so it's kind of the job of people like us uh, who do have a really strong attachment uh, to these liberties to make sure that no ordinary people aren't forced to make that kind of choice. Helen, in your article, you also said the Australian government requested emergency permission to track citizens' phones uh, using their metadata retention law of 2015. Explain that law to us and how it worked and what came out of that. Uh, well, that's important just because it's uh, the most recent precedent uh, for the Australian government requesting permission to collect more data from our phones. And that was a counterterrorism-related law. And the idea was that it would be able to collect your metadata, which is, you know, how long your calls last and when you made them and things like that, um, but not the substance of the actual call, uh, to track terrorists and criminals. That's why that law was passed. Uh, and then it later came out that the government repository of this metadata was having requests come in from, you know, local city councils trying to track down who's been dumping their rubbish, you know, on the vacant lot down the street, mm -hmm. right? Something that's not at all counterterrorism related. So that's a concrete example of the Australian government proving that it can't be trusted to protect the privacy of its citizens once this kind of data is in its hands. Um, so that's a, a real counter-argument to people who want to just shrug and say, well, I suppose the government knows what they're doing. I guess we can trust them. Helen, you and Nasser were also talking about private companies who wanted to start tracking your, your, where you're at and whatever. I heard Google and Facebook are a couple of uh, companies that want to do this, a couple of these private companies. What do you think they want that information for other than to sell it? Uh, I think that is a pretty good enough reason uh, in and of itself. I don't think they need another reason. Um, Anything and more I, sinister? What I'm saying is, is there anything more sinister behind that other than selling your information? Uh, there's always the potential. Um, you know, I, I want to give big tech credit where it's due. I think a company like Apple has shown itself to be surprisingly protective of okay. its users' data. Uh, and so they have so far been pretty good about protecting privacy, um, certainly more so than the government of Australia or the government of England, you know, uh, the United Kingdom, which also has had massive data breaches. Um, so I think Apple's definitely ahead uh, of them um, in terms of privacy protection. And so I want to give them, them credit for that. 
Hmm. Well, in your article, Helen, you mentioned more than Australia. You mentioned uh, New York City. The New York City Police Benevolent Association says officers shouldn't be enforcing virtue <laughs> guidelines with and mixed messages. Could you discuss that a little bit? Well, there was a lot of outcry. Uh, on social media just recently because a video was released of a, an, an NYPD cop basically wailing on this guy. Um, yes. And it turned out that that incident of minor police brutality had started when that cop was trying to separate people and have them stay six feet apart. Uh, and the reaction on social media was to yell at the cop. But the Police Benevolent Association says, you know what? He was in that situation because he was doing something that cops aren't designed to do. You know, you are asking cops to do something other than police order. You're asking them to police, you know, six feet of separation between people. And of course, that's going to lead to lots of unnecessary friction. Um, so just let cops handle their job, which is keeping us safe. Right. Uh, and don't add this additional thing onto their plate, which is only going to lead to more videos like the one that blew up social media. Helen, also in your article, you talked about long lines outside grocery stores of people waiting to come inside and shop. Many become a permanent, may be become a permanent fixture. I mean, Helen, that sounds like a socialist society to me. Whenever I go to the Walmart or the Home Depot these days and have to wait outside in line six feet from, and I call it anti-social distancing, not social distancing. I mean, let's call it what, it what it really is. And then when I go into a lot of stores like the Walmart, I'm shocked that here in America we have super stores like Walmart and in many of the aisles, the shelves are empty. And this is, these are images that I've seen coming out of Venezuela and Cuba. Helen Andrews, do you think it's finally going to hit home to the American people that this is not the way we want to live our lives? Yeah, I was honestly shocked to see Ross Dowsett, the New York Times columnist that I actually like, uh, say in his column that he can kind of, yeah, totally imagine that these long lines outside the grocery store, because, you know, your local Safeway has a one-in, one-out policy, um, becoming a permanent fixture. I just, I really, I, I hope that Americans won't put up with that. Uh, and I especially hope so, because that particular rule has no discernible health benefit at all. Um, you know, the, the amount of time that it takes to transfer the virus to somebody, it just, it just can't be accomplished between two shoppers passing in a grocery aisle. So trying to limit the population of people in your local Safeway is just not a reasonable health goal, and it's certainly not worth adopting what you say is a truly Soviet kind of system of long queues to get milk and bread. Uh, yeah. So clearly some very smart people think that that could be the new normal, but I really, really hope that it's not. You know, Rick, I just want to interject real quick here. You know, this whole thing that we're talking about, you know, all of a sudden people think this six-foot rule is some unbelievable algorithmic formula that was formulated, okay, by the CDC and looking at it. And they, you can go on the sites and you can take a look and see that the average sneeze of a person Mm -hmm. now, the, an average sneeze can literally expel droplets up to 23 feet away Wow! on a normal sneeze. So this six feet BS that's out there was just something that was created, I think. They had to have a number. I mean, they couldn't, you know, one foot was too close. 12 feet or 15 feet was probably too far. And they probably said, you know, six feet... What the heck? Let's put it out there. And Fossey did it, and Dr. Bricks did it. Now everybody thinks six feet, as you say, Rick, is anti-social distancing. I right. mean, you're absolutely right. It has nothing to do with anything in terms of that thing. Okay, we're passing by like two ships in a night far away, and mm -hmm. it's just another one of those 
you know, things that are out there that everybody thinks, you know, is just medically derived and it has no medical bearing whatsoever. And that, by the way, that is coming from a medical doctor, Dr. Nasser Sheikh. And I thought it was funny the other day, my wife and I went into a, a nursery. We were looking for some, some flowers and um, it's hay fever season. Yes. And even with my mask on, I did, I did sneeze. And, and there everyone were looked two, at you? Yes. Yes. I was like, <laughs> okay. Helen, Helen Andrews, we want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Helen, please tell our, our viewers and our listeners where they can go to read your articles and follow your work. Uh, well, I'm on Twitter at H-E-R Andrews, uh, and you can always find my work and other people's great work at theamericanconservative.com. Well, Helen, I'm, I surely hope that uh, you'll be a regular guest here. I know this is your first visit with this, and I hope you can become a regular part of Conservative Commandos. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care, and God bless. It's been a pleasure. Next on the Conservative Commandos Radio Show, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. He's the Executive Director of the Task Force on National and Homeland Security. We're going to be discussing the America Made in America protection for the power grid. Don't go away. We'll be right back with our next guest. Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. Their prices are direct from the airlines, and they're so low you can't find these fares published anywhere. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and great package deals anywhere around the world. Wherever you want to go, they can help you get there cheaply and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call right now for the lowest travel prices anywhere and for great last-minute travel deals, too. Call 888-431-0562. That's 888-431-0562. 888-431-0562. Dish TV is better than cable TV. Here's why. Dish has the nation's lowest TV price, along with an award-winning DVR that can skip commercials, record eight shows at once, and get access to thousands of movies at your fingertips. Cable simply can't even compare. So the smart choice is to cut the cable and get Dish. Plus, you get all these great TV features, free HD DVR upgrade, free installation, and free movie channels. Say goodbye to cable and get more with Dish TV. 877-290-7764. 877-290-7764. As an added bonus, you can switch to Dish now and receive a $50 Visa gift card. So call now and get Dish TV. Call 877-290-7764, 877-290-7764. That's 877-290-7764. Limited time offer, 24-month commitment, and credit qualification required. Cancellation fee, monthly equipment fees, and other restrictions apply. Promotion can change at any time. Friend, do you remember when it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank to expand a business, go on vacation, or buy a new car? Well, today, withdrawing your own cash has become a very risky business, according to The Secret War, a shocking new research report. I just read it, and folks, I was amazed to learn why banks are now required to spy on us for the government and then report any suspicious or unusual behavior. I suggest you get The Secret War free. Just call the number on the screen, no charge, from the folks at Swiss America and get this. Did you know simply spending cash today may be enough to have you branded as a potential criminal? That's right. The new war on cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. The secret war is yours free, so call the number on the screen and you can tell them. Pat Boone gave you the number. 
And once again, we want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. Once again, for rebroadcast of our show, just check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. Also, be sure to like us, friend us, and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. And with that, Nasser, we do have our next guest with us in the honor of the introduction. That's all yours. Thank you, Rick. We have Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, who is the Executive Director of the Task Force on National and Homeland Security and the Director of the U.S. Nuclear Strategy Forum. He served in the Congressional EMP Commission, the Congressional Strategic Posture Commission, the House Armed Services Committee, and the CIA. He's a patriot. He's also the author of several books, one of which is Blackout Wars and the EMP Manhattan Project. And he has a current book there that I think you have in front of you, correct, Doctor? If you want to hold that up for us? The Power yes. and the Light. Uh-huh. Yes, it's The Power and the Light. Uh-huh. And uh, we want to welcome you to the Conserve Commandos radio show, sir. Well, thank you so much for having me. Oh, great. Well, we want to talk about the article you wrote, Made in America, Protecting the Power Grid. And right away, your very first sentence, I mean... It's so bold, it's so strong, and you basically say that President Trump's new executive order on securing the United States' bulk power system of May 1st, together with his executive order on coordinating the national resilience to electromagnetic pulses, may well be the most important acts of his presidency. I mean, that is a powerful statement that almost for three and a half years he's had so many executive orders. Why do you feel that this one would be like, you know, right up there at the very top of the heap. Well, not only in the, I was, when I was writing that sentence, I thought about writing of his or any presidency. And, uh, and I think wow. I can make a case that those executive orders might be the most important, not only of the Trump administration, but of any presidency. Because the, our civilization is an electronic civilization. And we depend for our survival, 330 billion Americans, upon the electric grid. And uh, for decades, uh, you know, presidents in our nation and the Department of Defense, you know, haven't thought about the electric grid as a vital part of our national security. Uh, but it is. And that electric grid, the whole, whole of North America could be blacked out by the sun, by an EMP from the sun, which is inevitable and is going to happen for sure someday. As a matter of fact, the estimate from NASA is 12% per decade, which very virtually guarantees within our within our lifetimes, or the latest, that of our grandchildren, we will experience a solar superstorm like the 1859 Carrington event that would probably black out not only in the North American grid, but the entire world, and put global civilization at risk. You know, we can't survive without the electric grid. The EMP commission on which I served estimated that 90% of the American people could die within a year from starvation, disease, and societal collapse if we had a nationwide blackout lasting a, uh, a year. The, uh, uh, the other threats, of course, are the uh, EMP from a nuclear attack uh, from countries like North Korea, or Iran, or Russia, or China, and they all plan to make uh, EMP attacks in their military doctrine, and they have the capabilities, uh, or non-nuclear EMP weapons which actually can be made by uh, uh, you know, a person with uh, minimum electronic skills working from design information that's available on the internet, or even wow. buying devices which are available for sale. You don't even need a license to buy things like the EMP uh, suitcase, which is not meant to be used as a weapon, but it can be employed as a weapon. So this is a existential threat that's been staring us in the face for a long time, uh, and finally, we have a president who has listened to the experts after 20 years of warnings and has, in these two executive orders, the one he passed last year and the one he just passed now, uh, you know, this is a sea change in the way Washington thinks about national security. Finally, somebody is doing something to protect the national electric grid. I apologize. I keep getting <laughs> phone, I'm, phone calls. That's all right. Phone. That's it all right. What That's it is. what happens when it's on live. That's all right. Uh, well, sir, the question I'd like to ask you is: is that um, these are the kind of things that's okay? These are the kind of things, okay, that 
you know, scare people that are in the know. And there's so many times, you know, sometimes, you know, you're at a dinner, you're talking with colleagues and the conversation comes up to what's happening and you throw things out. And I've had this discussion before and my friends will say, oh, you know what? Come on. Okay. You know, that's never going to happen. You know, I mean, and my question always has been that, and for those of you that are out there, I mean, a lot of these articles, when you read them, there's a lot of information out there. But it's not the type of stuff that people at the dinner table just want to sit down and digest about an EMP pulse or whatever. But I'll tell you what, when just a few weeks ago, we had a little bit of a disturbance on the AT&T network. And for about 15 to 20 minutes, all of our phones here in our house sort of just went on the fritz. And I'll tell you what, my kids, because we're all at home now, I mean, for 15, 20 minutes, sir... They didn't know what to do because, you know, <laughs> I mean, their phones are gone. And like you said here, I mean, that's just happening, okay, on a personal level. Can you imagine what would happen with a lone wolf terrorist having what you were talking about, like a dirty bomb or something like that, or an EMP briefcase or suitcase, and utilizing that to knock out something even in a city? The consequences of that would be severe, wouldn't they? Well, look at what we're experiencing right now with the coronavirus. Absolutely. Which is, uh, chiefly a psychological threat. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the as numbers come on, the coronavirus is not the bubonic plague. It's not a genetically engineered anthrax, which has a 90% mortality rate. Okay. Uh, when the statistics are, 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 are finally done, I think people are going to find that the mortality rate from the coronavirus is really not much worse than, than the flu has been. And yet, because of this psychological threat, we've basically shut down our economy. And very quickly, I think every American at this point, uh, we're living through proof positive about the great fragility of our society. You know, how little it takes really to start not just disrupting people's lives, but we're having to have White House intervention to ensure that food uh, supplies and critical infrastructures for meat and, uh, and dairy products, for example, are going to continue to flow to the American people. Uh, there are massive, uh, you know, uh, shortages of all kinds that uh, people are experiencing in, in, in the grocery stores. And this is just a psychological threat. What if we got hit with a real threat, a, a threat that really uh, we voluntarily shut down our critical infrastructures, basically, by shutting down the economy? What would happen if that happened involuntarily because of an EMP or an, a cyber attack? And another thing I would add, that, you know, uh, in most of the great catastrophes that have struck our nation, uh, the day before they happened, most people would think, oh, that could never happen. Right. You know, uh, Navy thought it could never happen, and most Americans thought it could never happen, that the Pacific Fleet would be sunk by aircraft coming off of Japanese aircraft carriers. You know, that wasn't supposed to happen. The military doctrine of the time said that a future naval war would be fought by battleships, slugging it out with each other, and that aircraft carriers weren't your main offensive weapon. They were basically for uh, scouting uh, scouting purposes. But a re- military revolution happened right under our nose, and we ignored Billy Mitchell, who saw it coming. Yes. And uh, yes. he was court-martialed for giving the warning. He was court-martialed for giving the warning and had his career ruined. And, uh, and as a consequence, we had Pearl Harbor. Uh, before the 9-11 attacks happened, there wasn't a single intelligence agency that predicted that the 9-11 attacks were going to happen. 3,000 Americans would die. die. The idea that terrorists could hijack airliners and uh, use a very low-tech way of basically plunging our, our, our country into chaos wasn't conceived by anybody. And now we've been taken by surprise again by this coronavirus. You know, we've spent decades and billions of dollars supposedly preparing for biological warfare. You know, an intelligent high school student would have known to stockpile masks and to pharmaceuticals and vent and be and building up ventilators. And yet, when when the when the uh, crisis has come upon us, the government wasn't ready for it, despite all of that. And I don't want to see that happen again with EMP. We're going to pull out of the coronavirus, thank goodness, because it isn't an existential threat. And because we have a president who has great leadership and who has jumped into the breach and made up for the incompetence of our government by coordinating everything out of the White House and doing things out of the White House 
that should have been done by the National Institute of Health and the CDC. We even have a, an assistant secretary of defense in the Pentagon, by the way, for nuclear and biological uh, uh, defense. Where, the, where was he uh, in preparations for all these things? No, it has to fall on President Trump. We can't afford to have the same thing happen that's happening with the coronavirus happen with EMP, whether it's from the sun or from a nuclear attack or from some group of terrorists who have gotten their hands on uh, non-nuclear EMP devices, which anybody can buy. They don't cost that much. Uh, you know, it will only take a team of, you know, maybe nine of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a team of nine to run around the country knocking out EHV transformers to put the whole country into blackout for a year which would basically end us as a civilization. We can't afford to get this one wrong, which is what I wrote my book about. It's basically the power and the light is a progress report to the American people. How good is the U.S. government? How good is the deep state doing at implementing President Trump's executive order? In the constitutional republic I grew up in, you know, when the Congress and the president said, go do something, things used to get done, but it doesn't, it doesn't happen that way anymore. Right. We now know there's this... The deep state that's got a mind of its own, they think they know better than the president, than, better than the Congress, better than, than the EMP commission, and they end up slow rolling and sabotaging efforts, waiting for a new Congress or another president to come along so they can continue business as usual. You know, we can't afford business as usual when it comes to these threats. And, you know, thank goodness for President Trump for finally being, we finally have a president who has understood this, you know, after 20 years of effort. You know, he's imp trying to implement the EMP commission recommendations, but we've got to watch the deep state to make sure they do the job. Watch them right. like hawks because they will, you know, <clears throat> or they will pull another coronavirus on them. Dr. Pride, we have to take a little break. I'm, you know, I know you can hold through that break. You are listening to and watching the conservative commanders radio show with Dr. Nasha Sheikh and yours truly, Rick Trader. Dr. Peter Vincent Pry is our guest. He has written an article that's up on the Washington Times, Made in America, Protecting the Power Grid. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more from our guest. Mom, thank God you're going to be okay. I'm so relieved. But you both should know when my time comes, I have a final expense policy with Senior Care USA. Is Senior Care USA the life insurance policy that helps loved ones pay for funeral expenses and other debts? Bill and I called to get more information. Yes, and there's an immediate payout of up to $50,000. If you're over 50, call Senior Care USA now to learn more about final expense insurance plans. There's no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing condition like I do. But when I called, the quote was free, and there was no pressure. I found out that policies start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. I'm going to call today. Ask about the free prescription discount card. Oh, I'm so glad you'll be taken care of. Call 1-800-822-7419. That's 1-800-822-7419. But is it? It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page Publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right. We will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions, but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call 1-877-461-5033. Does your current bathroom need to be updated immediately? Introducing One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling. The complete and hassle-free way to get the new bathroom of your dreams in as little as one day. And for as little as $1.99 a month. 
Yes, the experts at One Day Bath and Shower Remodeling will come to you anywhere in the country and show you all the customized options. Now you can have a brand new bathroom in as little as one day. Large or small bathrooms, if you want a new bathtub or shower installed, we can do it in as little as one day. And if you call right now, you can save $750 off your remodel. We make it easy by offering you financing as low as $199 per month. So for as little as $199 a month, you can finally have the bathroom of your dreams. Call now to schedule your free in-home consultation. Again, we want to welcome you back. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And once again, for rebroadcasts of our show, check out our website, ccrshow.com. That's ccrshow.com. You'll find our TV show there and our radio show. Our guest this segment is Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. He's the executive director of the Task Force on National and Homeland Security and director of the U.S. Nuclear Strategy Forum, both congressional advisory boards. And he's also the author of a new book. And Dr. Pry, if you could hold that up for our viewers, The Power and the Light. Dr. Pry, in your article, you talk about President Trump's new executive orders, do these orders go far enough, in your opinion? Well, the first executive order does go far enough. And that first executive order uh, that he uh, signed on March 26th of 2019, last year, you know, uh, is, is basically follows and attempts to implement the recommendations of the EMP Commission. And uh, I actually personally had a, had a little something to do with that executive order. Because before President Trump became president, I had the privilege of briefing him uh, on EMP. I gave him a 45-minute briefing uh, during the Iowa caucuses when he was a candidate for president. And he had not heard of EMP, but he was on the, quick on the uptake. He realized that this was a, a, an existential threat to our civilization. And he mm-hmm. asked, well, why is it that the government has failed to protect the American people from this? And I explained to him how the government bureaucracy... The problem was so big that nobody, it was a hot potato that nobody wanted to take responsibility for it. The Department of Defense would say that uh, the EMP can be caused by the sun, by solar flare. So it's the dep- job of the Department of Homeland Security to deal with the EMP. The Homeland Security people would say, well, it could be done by a nuclear weapon or a terrorist attack. So it's the Department of Defense's job. <laughs> and the Department of Energy said our job is to provide cost-effective electricity, not national security, so it's the, either on the DOD or the DHS to do it. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget this, and, and this is in my book, this conversation, uh, But and President Trump said to me, uh, well, Doc, don't worry, when I'm elected president, we'll knock their heads together and solve this problem. And and that, in effect, is what his executive order does, the one that was signed last year. So it puts all of the departments and agencies on the hot seat. They're all responsible to work together on a plan. And he doesn't trust any of them. The president <laughs> himself, through his national security advisor, is responsible for overseeing and managing what is basically an EMP Manhattan project. And I think the executive order itself is excellent and does go far enough, that right. first executive order. Uh, it's the, the But no executive order... Is, I mean, every executive order is just a piece of paper. Ultimately, will it be implemented? You know, we, can we trust the bureaucracies to implement it? Right. And that's why I wrote the book, because I see signs that they're trying to slow roll and sabotage the president's executive order on many fronts. Now, the next executive order, uh, it uh, has to do with uh, cybersecurity, but it's also indirectly relevant to EMP, because we're concerned about purchasing electrical equipment that's critical to our grid from foreign foreign sources, especially China. You know, if you're going to buy stuff from China, uh, since they in their military doctrine recognize that the electric grid is critical, and they even have a revolutionary new way of warfare, the Russians, the Chinese, the North Koreans, and the Iranians, all of them, if they got in a war with us, a big war, one of the first things they'd try to do is take out our electric grid, because that would paralyze our military forces. So you can't trust you know, any of those countries. I think that we're seeing this from Chinese. this Chinese. I think we're seeing from this Chinese flu. You can't trust China. The, the misinformation coming out of China. You know, Dr. Pry, I got to be honest with you. I think that I, prior to you 
prior to you and J.D. Manier, a very good friend of mine, friend of the show, I believe yours also, who first uh, had you on as a guest here on Conservative Commanders, this sounded a little sci-fi to me. Reminded me of the movie um, uh, with Michael Rennie, same year, uh, going back to 1951. How the this guy came from outer space and knocked out the electrical grid for half an hour. Got to be <laughs> the day the Earth stood still. One of my favorite all time movies. We, is it going to take something yeah. like that, uh, Doctor Pry? Would it take something like that, or is, is that all it would? T- is that what is needed for the American people to understand how serious this is? Because as I said, I was in. The, I was a skeptic. I was like Donald Trump. I mean, what are you talking about? Day the Earth stood still stuff. I mean, the American people, I, I, I do believe the American people don't think that this could ever happen to them. Well, uh, I don't think the problem is with the American people. Uh, you know, and, uh, and it's certainly not with the White House, because certainly, uh, you know, finally we have a president who has been taking this seriously. I think Americans have common sense, and uh, we have millions of Americans who have lived through things like Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Katrina, who have seen the consequences of what protracted blackouts can do. Fortunately, we haven't had a, a, a case where the entire nation has been blacked out for a year. Uh, but I think the average American who has had any kind of an experience with a blackout, even one that's only lasted for a few days, you know, knows how vital the electric grid is and is concerned that uh, we don't want to risk the existence of the country on something like this happening. But people also know, I think, that uh, 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 because everybody's experienced something, even if you haven't been through a hurricane, everybody's had the experience of driving down the road listening to the radio, and you drive under a high-power pension line, okay, and then you, you lose the radio for a while, then you come out on the other side. And what's happened is you've driven through an electromagnetic field, okay? Uh, uh, so, so everybody has an experienced a small-scale EMP like, like that. So you know it's real, and the bad guys know it's real. You know, imagine a field a million times stronger than that uh, over all of North America. And that's what we're talking about. I, I, the, I don't think the problem has been, uh, you know, the people. The problem has been a corrupt U.S. government bureaucracy that thinks it knows best about everything. And also, uh, this last administration, you know, the Obama administration, uh, uh, you know, we've had so many holdovers. And as a matter of fact, one of the things I point out in my book, that uh, in almost... In, at almost every level within the departments and agencies in the Department of Energy and the Department of Homeland Security, the key actors who are in charge of implementing President Trump's executive order are Obama administration holdovers. Wow. And these are the very people who resisted, you know, uh, taking seriously the EMP threat for ideological reasons, chiefly, uh, you know, for, for many years. And um, uh, I'm a big supporter of the president. I'm going to continue to support him, obviously. But one of the promises I wish he would deliver on is his promise to drain the swamp. You know, mm-hmm. there are I agree there with are that. Mm-hmm. people in government that need to be fired. Uh, part of the problem. Imagine the promise the president could have made in his agenda if he had a government that supported his agenda. You know, the president is fighting against basically about President Obama's government. You know, because when he first came in. Well, for a lot of reasons, but one of the things he did, and he has never gotten credit for this from the mainstream press. You know, when the and president he never was will. Elected, the press will never give him any credit for anything. You know that. That's that's right. But when he was first elected, uh, uh, you know, he reached out an olive branch to the uh, Democrats and to the establishment Republicans. You know, by keeping on. A lot of the Obama administration people, a lot of the establishment Republican people who were ideologically his enemies. And, uh, and he didn't bring in, I mean, typically what routinely happens when a new president is elected, is something like 3,000 or 4,000 yeah. of the top, uh, top people turn in their resignations. 
the president did not accept those resignations. That's right. They, they, those. Served, they served as at the pleasure of the president and Dr. Fry. I agree with you. I think I also believe that if Donald Trump made one mistake, he didn't clean house the way Barack Obama did. Hey, Dr. Fry, we've got to go um, coming up against a hard break. But before we do, I would like for you to tell our audience where they could find out more about EMP how to get your article, Made in America, Protecting the Grid, and also how they can get your book, The Power and the Light. Uh, the, the article uh, is in the Washington Times, and that's available online. Uh, all my books are available through Amazon.com. Uh, Blackout Wars, EMP Manhattan Project, and The Power and the Light. The subtitle of that is The Congressional EMP Commission's War to Save America. You know, if you want to help President Trump, I really urge you to read that book. It'll make you an expert on these uh, on these matters. And I think the American people, I know they, because I, I talked to so many of them, that they do take it seriously. The American people get it. You know, William F. Buckley once said that he'd rather be ruled by the first hundred names in the New York City phone book than all of these Harvard and Yale PhDs that occupy the federal bureaucracies. And that's absolutely right. You know, fortunately, we've got a president who does listen to the grassroots and listens to the people. So right. if people educate themselves on this and reach out to the White House and tell the president, keep going, keep going with your executive orders to get this country protected and start firing these people. I've got their names in this book. You know, join me in sending the names of the that. bad guys. I love that. Let's call them out. Let's let's publish names. That's what we really need to do. But Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, again, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Take care and God bless. And by the way, congratulations because you've been, you, sir, you have been the real champion of this, at least for the 12 years that I've been doing conservative commandos. So I want to congratulate you on that. Well, thank you. And, and just by having me and others who are warning about this, you too are part of the solution. Thank you for being an EMP warrior. Well, you're quite welcome. Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. thank you so much for joining us. Take care and God bless. And this is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with Dr. Wright, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, and yours truly, Rick Trader. Don't go away. Nasser and I will be back with more right after this break. Attention homeowners, do you have a house that's in need of serious repairs? Do you have tenants that never seem to make their monthly payments? How about code violations, past due taxes, or maintenance costs you just can't afford? Then call my friends right now with Quick Cash Offer. They specialize in buying any home, no matter how ugly the situation. Turn that problem property into cash right now. It's just that simple. One call and you can get rid of that home headache forever. They buy the ugliest houses with instant closings, instant cash, and huge savings. Plus, there are no realtor fees, no listing fees, and no repair costs. Just cash in your hands for that painful property. They're buying a few more houses in your neighborhood this month. So take advantage of this cash offer and call Quick Cash Offer now. 855-296-8854. 855-296-8854. That's 855-296-8854. Listen carefully. If your student loan debt is overwhelming you and things seem hopeless, we've got great news. If you're still struggling with your student loan debt, there are government programs available that may actually lower your payments by consolidating your federal student loans. Just call us. We'll review your situation and work with you to consolidate your debt. In many cases, depending on your situation, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. It doesn't matter how much you owe or how far behind you are. Even if you're in default, call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. You can stop the harassing phone calls and the wage garnishments. All you need to do is pick up the phone and call us right now. We can remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your payments, and we can do it today. Stop worrying. This is a real solution that can help. So please call us right now. Call 
Are you over the age of 50? One peace of mind and financial security for your family? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from the Final Expense Insurance Hotline. The average funeral costs about $7,000, even more. And the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. That leaves your loved ones with a burden of paying your debts and funeral costs. Our plans start as low as a dollar per day and will pay up to $30,000 for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase and your plan cannot be canceled regardless of your medical condition as long as you make your premium payments. Get free information right now. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone in just a few minutes. Call right now. Call 855-221-7334. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? How do you get in front of companies or get a patent? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors just like you for 35 years. And thousands of people contact them every month. With 65 offices, you can meet with an InventHelp representative near you who will keep your idea confidential and explain their invention process step by step. InventHelp has helped over 10,000 inventors get patents. And they offer 3D animations and prototyping services to help demonstrate your idea. InventHelp's exclusive data bank includes over 9,000 companies who have agreed to confidentially review new ideas like yours. Don't wonder what to do next. Take action right now and get the help you need from InventHelp. InventHelp. Call today for free information. 800-880-2937. That's 800-880-2937 now. Well, Dr. Nasser Sheikh, that just about wraps it up for, for us for today. I want to thank you for sitting in as my co-host. And Nasser, how can people keep track of what you're up to without an app on your phone? How can they keep <laughs> track of you when you're not here on Conservative Commandos? Well, unfortunately, they're, they can go to a website. But you know what? Some places you're going to have to go to an app. <laughs> <laughs> But it, and you're gonna need a computer. You're gonna need any, you know. You're gonna need all that, the electricity, the grid, the whole thing. But you can go to the website, which is www.drnasirshaikh.com. That's www.drdr, my name Nasser Sheikh, dot com or Twitter, which is at Nasser Sheikh Show at Nasser Shake Show and Facebook Nasser, at the Nasser, Nasser Shake by Show. By the way, the, the, the composition of the picture, you just need to sit back a little bit. We're cutting the top of your head. <laughs> I get excited. Off. And baby. that I great head of hair. That great head of hair. Can we cut up? <laughs> <laughs> and we want to thank our guests as well. Our first guest was Frank Bernuccio, who's also a co host. He's the editor in chief of the New York Analysis of Policy and Government. Frank was talking to us about his article, Funding Waste and Corruption. We also had Helen Andrews, first time here, being a guest on the Conserve Commandos. She's a senior editor at the American Conservative, and she was talking to us about her article, Post-Lockdown, Insist on the Old Normal. And finally, we had Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. He's the executive director of the Task Force on National and Homeland Security. And, you know, folks, I know this might be some dry reading uh, and just dry information, but literally he's talking about how America needs to protect its power grid mm -hmm. and how our, the way of our life can easily be destroyed, not just by a nuclear explosion and all those things that you see in the movies, but simply by somebody actually having an EMP briefcase or a suitcase. And you need a few guys just to do some terrorist activities and knock out the electrical components that our whole world thrives on, especially here uh, in the United States of America. So some, once again, great guests as always, Rick, great information. All right. But for right now, we got to run. We got to go. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you tomorrow on TVN on radio. Mm -hmm.